Hello, I'm Steven Ballast. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use what I think is the number one must-have plugin for OBS, and that is the Scopes plugin. It's the first plugin I always install now when I set up OBS on a new machine, because it helps you make your video in OBS look great. Getting your exposure and color set right on your camera is crucial to getting a good looking image, and the Scopes plugin makes that easy. So let me show you how to do that. You'll find a link to download this free plugin down in the description of this video. Once you have it downloaded and installed, go ahead and launch OBS, and the first thing we need to do is get the Scopes dock open. This can be a little confusing because if you click the Sources Plus button, you'll see things in there like vector scope and waveform and false color, but this isn't where you want to open up the Scopes. What you need to do is go to the Tools menu and find New Scope Dock. Click that, and a new window with the scopes will open. I usually dock it right beside my canvas so I can see the displays right next to my video. The default configuration will have all the displays open when you first launch the dock. The two I use 99% of the time, and that I'm going to show you today, are the waveform monitor and the vector scope. So to hide all the others, right click in the dock and uncheck all the other displays and that helps to reduce the clutter and gives me a bigger view of the displays that I do want to see. First, let's talk about the waveform monitor. If you're not familiar with a waveform monitor, it measures the brightness or luminance of your video image. At the top is 100% brightness. Anything above that, the video will just turn pure white and no longer contain any detail or information in it. It's what's called overexposed. The bottom at zero is pure black and underexposed and loses detail as well. So we want to try and adjust our camera's exposure and our lighting so that in an ideal world, everything in our image will exist between zero and 100%. Practically, this may not always be possible. Your camera's dynamic range and the lighting conditions you have to work with may require some parts of your image to be under or overexposed. But the more you can control the lighting conditions, the better your image will look. When setting up your camera and adjusting exposure, you'll want to give the highest priority to your subject. In other words, people and faces. And we want to place those around 60 to 80% on the waveform monitor. Then for a stage or performance type situation, I like to keep my background at least 30% below my subject on the waveform monitor. That's a common issue I'll see in a lot of live streams, is that people will have their background lighting too bright, and it's overexposed on video, because to the eye in the room it looks nice, but you'll often need to make some changes to your lighting to get things to look great on camera. So let's take a look at how to adjust this image here. I'm using a Honey Optics PTZ camera for this shot. You can find a link to these cameras with a discount code down in the description of this video. I've got my front wash lights at the level I want them at. For most people, that'll probably just be on full brightness. And now I'll go into the camera's exposure settings and adjust it to get my subject here at around 70%. Now, I've got a lot of white things in this shot, so you can see the wall in the background here, and the pulpit is gonna be nearly overexposed because with the wash light that I'm putting onto the stage, anything that is white is gonna end up being pretty bright. So just try and keep those from overexposing as much as you can. Next, I'm going to add some color to the background. While keeping an eye on the waveform monitor, trying to make sure that I keep that 30% difference between the subject and the background. So there, pretty quickly, we've been able to adjust our camera settings and tweak in the lighting. And because we're using a waveform monitor, we can be confident that everything is looking correct. Most of us are probably using TVs or computer monitors in our live stream setups to see what's going on with our camera shots, to frame your shot or check focus and things like that. But if those aren't calibrated, you won't be able to tell precisely when something is actually overexposed or underexposed. So using a waveform monitor is gonna be your best friend when setting the exposure of your camera and adjusting your lighting for video. Next, let's look at the vector scope. If you're not familiar with a vector scope, it measures the color or chroma content in your image. It's a circle, and you can see these markers around the circle are for red, magenta, blue, cyan, green, and yellow. It's essentially a color wheel. If I input a completely red image, you can see a dot in the little red box by the R. 
that's completely 100% saturated perfect red. If I desaturate the red, the dot will move back towards the center, but still on a line from the center of the vector scope to the red marker. Both black and white will be in the middle, representing no color. So with this grayscale gradient, we only get a dot in the middle because there's no color in this image. The vector scope only measures color and the saturation of the color. If I input these color bars, we get a dot in each of the boxes, red, magenta, blue, and so forth, and a dot in the middle for the black and white bars. So if we look at the image from the camera, it's showing us a representation of all the colors that are in our image. The first thing we can do with the vector scope is check our white balance. Put a white card in your front wash lighting and zoom in until it fills the frame, and it should just be a dot in the middle of the vector scope. If it's not, you need to redo your white balance procedure on your camera, or use its color controls to get the dot in the center. This can also be useful when you are matching multiple cameras, especially cameras from different manufacturers, because they might not all white balance the same. I think the most important adjustment to make using the vector scope is for skin tones. Even though the white balance procedure has centered white in the middle of the vector scope and made white look white, that doesn't necessarily mean our colors will look correct. Most cameras will have a hue adjustment, and what that does is actually rotate the colors on the vector scope. So even though you've white balanced your camera, if your hue setting is off, different cameras can still have totally different looking colors. So we could look at something like this color chart. I've got a link to this color chart down in the description of this video if you want to use it for yourself. And by adjusting the hue setting of the camera, we can use it to get our colors lined up as best as possible. It's really important that you have the color chart or whatever it is that you're looking at to adjust your colors in the actual light that you'll be using. So your stage lights or video lights, whatever it is you're using, they need to be on when you adjust the color of your cameras because lighting has a huge impact on the color that your camera sees. But more important, I think, than getting all the colors to line up is getting your skin tone set properly. I've created a mask here in OBS with a PNG file that's filled with black and has a transparent square in the middle. If we zoom in to fill that square with a person's face, we can look at skin tones on the vector scope. This line here on the vector scope is the skin tone line. So for skin to look natural and the correct color, it needs to fall on this line. And this applies to any ethnicity. All skin will fall on this line. It will just have a different saturation level. Use your camera's hue adjustment to get it as close to being on the line as possible. And once you've done a white balance and gotten your skin on the skin tone line, your colors really should start to look right in your image. Our eyes are really good at detecting when skin tones are off. So if you get that right, the rest of your colors will probably fall into place as well. At this point, the Scopes plugin has helped you dial in your exposure and color from your camera and tweak in your lighting. You should now have a great looking image for your live stream. If you're looking to get the most out of OBS, I've got a lot of videos on my channel that walk through different aspects of live streaming. Especially check out my video on optimizing OBS for video. It will help you set up the canvas and encoder to make your stream look and work great. Until next time, bye.